My name is Kim Selfon. I work for Betsedek Legal Services. Betsedek is a legal aid agency, and we provide free legal services uh, to people that live in Los Angeles County. Uh, our phone number is 323-939-0400. That's on the slide deck, so you'll get a copy of that. It's 323 323- Nine three nine zero five zero six. That's our intake number. We provide all kinds of legal services um, from help with conservatorships to uh, assisting with eviction defense, uh, elder abuse, in-home supportive services. Um, and you can check out our website for all the different services we cover. I'm going to talk about Medi-Cal today and how to stop Medi-Cal terminations. Mm-hmm. So I, I want to give you an overview here of the medical climate. So we are now in a post-pandemic world. There's a picture on the slide of a mask that says post-pandemic world. Um, During the COVID health emergency, which started in March of 2020, there were no medical terminations or changes in benefits. So there have been no medical terminations for over two years. Um, and there's been no changes in Medi-Cal benefits for over two years. If you did a Medi-Cal redetermination in the past two years and you were no longer eligible for Medi-Cal, Medi-Cal didn't terminate you or change your benefit. Um, but that is changing. It has changed. Beginning in July of 2023, the COVID health emergency is over now, and Medi-Cal is doing annual redeterminations. And if you no longer qualify for Medi-Cal or you don't complete your redetermination um, or you don't give Medi-Cal the documents they need to complete your redetermination, you may be terminated or your benefits may change. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So 33% of Californians are enrolled in Medi-Cal. So that's like one out of every three people are Medi-Cal recipients. So these changes to Medi-Cal are going to affect everybody, right? Um, Somebody, if it's not you, it's somebody you know or somebody you work with. Um, In LA, in July, 34,000 people were terminated for Medi-Cal. So July was the first month that Medi-Cal started terminating people or changing benefits if they no longer qualify, they don't give back their redetermination, um, or they don't provide Medi-Cal with all the information they need to process eligibility requests. So most of the people who were terminated in July were terminated because they didn't submit their redetermination. So if if you are a new Medi-Cal applicant, um, you may not realize that Every year, Medi-Cal must complete a redetermination to see if you're still eligible for benefits. So from March of 2020 to July of 2023, they really didn't do anything with these redeterminations. They didn't terminate you or change your benefits. So you may not even have realized that you need to do this. Um, But it's part of staying on Medi-Cal is completing your annual redetermination. So this whole process of starting back off on looking at Medi-Cal applications, doing the redeterminations, and terminating people or changing benefits if they're no longer entitled to the benefits is called Medi-Cal unwinding, right? We're unwinding from the public health emergency. So this is going to be happening over the next 10 months um, until July of 2024. So When you initially applied for Medi-Cal, let's say you applied for Medi-Cal in January of 2020. 
Every year in January, well, before January, Medi-Cal will send you the redetermination packet for you to complete. So Medi-Cal has rolling redeterminations. They're not going to look at everybody that's on Medi-Cal in one month. They're going to look at uh, the benefits over a period of the next 10 months. So if you have moved since March of 2020, Medi-Cal may not have your new address if you didn't report it. I know if I moved, I'm not going to think, oh, I got to tell Medi-Cal I moved. But if Medi-Cal doesn't have your new address, they cannot send you the redetermination packet and you cannot complete the packet if you don't get it. I mean, you could call them, but you would have to be aware to know, you know, it's time for your redetermination and call them. So it's really important that you let Medi-Cal know that you've moved if you've moved since March 2020 so that you can get the correct information to complete your redetermination. Um, if you don't complete your redetermination, like you didn't get it, you don't know you have to do it, you didn't complete it on time, Medi-Cal would terminate you if they don't get it back in time. And you may not find out your Medi-Cal is canceled until you go to use your benefits. I think that would be a very difficult situation to be in. So hopefully you can avoid that by being sure Medi-Cal has your correct address and that you complete your redetermination and send it back to them on time. So there are different ways that you can act right now to avoid a termination, right? The best thing to do is avoid the termination before it happens. So like I mentioned, you can contact the Medi-Cal office, make sure they have your correct mailing address. You can call them. Uh, there's also a new website that is statewide. It's called benefitscal.com. Um, that's www.benefits, B-E-N-E-F-I-T-S, Cal, C-A-L dot com. And you can sign up for an account on Benefits Cal. If you use a computer or your phone uh, for internet access, you can do this online. You can submit your change in address at Benefits Cal. You can complete your redetermination at Benefits Cal. Um, and you can upload documents to Benefits Cal that you want your Medi-Cal eligibility worker to see. Now, we've been told that there has been some problems with Benefits Cal uploading documents. So you can also go you know, to your Medi-Cal office, to the DPSS office closest to you, to give them documents to do your redetermination. Um, you can call Medi-Cal, and I think their phone number's in another slide, to do your redetermination as well. So there's lots of ways to do your redetermination. Um, I want to encourage you to open your mail. I know this sounds like a weird request, but I know I am guilty of not opening my mail. I wait until the beginning of the month and do all my bills at once, and I just let it sit there. But that is not going to help me if I get a Medi-Cal termination. Because if you don't complete your redetermination or the information's incorrect, or you're just getting a termination because they calculated eligibility wrong, Medi-Cal will send you a letter in the mail. Okay, you're going to get it in the mail. Um, and you have a really short time frame to request a hearing to make sure your benefits don't stop. And I'm going to talk about that next. So if Medi-Cal terminates your benefit for any reason, they must send you what's called a notice of action. It's a letter that they send to you 10 days before the termination date. So I have Medi-Cal right now. And then on October 15th, I get a notice saying this November 1st, on November 1st, your Medi-Cal is going to end. It will be terminated, okay? The notice will state the date. It will tell you what date your benefit will be terminated or it will change. If you ask for a hearing 
before the termination date, before November 1st, in my case, then my benefit will not change. It will stay the same until the hearing or until I'm able to resolve the problem before the hearing. So it's really important to open up your mail in case there's this surprise Medi-Cal termination notice there so that you can ask for a hearing before the termination date or change. You may only have 10 days or less to request that hearing. Um, you can call and request a hearing at state hearings. The phone number is 800-743-8525, 800-743-8525 to request a hearing, or you can file online. You have actually up to 120 days to request a hearing. Usually it's only 90 days to request a hearing, but because this is the end of the public health emergency, they're giving you an extra 30 days to ask for a hearing. But if you ask for a hearing after the termination date, your benefits will end or change while you wait for the hearing. The only way to keep your benefits the same is to ask for a hearing before that termination or change. And it's really important, I want you to understand this, so I'm gonna have another couple slides to walk you through this process. So again, to stop the Medi-Cal change or termination, you must request a hearing before your Medi-Cal stops or changes. So let's say there's a picture of a box here, a blue box, and it says, you get a notice of action in the mail. It says your Medi-Cal stops or changes on November 1st. This is the example I just gave you. You ask for a hearing before November 1st. November 1st comes around and your Medi-Cal benefits will continue unchanged until the hearing. If let's say you lose the hearing and you're really not entitled to benefits, there's no overpayment. You don't have to pay any money back for Medi-Cal or IHSS. So there's really no downside to asking for a hearing before your benefits change. If you do that, you'll be able to keep your benefits, try to work things out. Um, and then in the end, if you're not entitled to benefits, that's okay. You're not going to be out of pocket any money to pay back. If you ask for a hearing after your benefits change, which is fine too, your benefits will stop or change while you wait for the hearing. So here's, um, oops. Here's an example of that. You get a notice in the mail and it says your Medi-Cal will stop or change on November 1st. November 1st comes around. Um, you ask for a hearing after November 1st. Well, then your benefit will end or it will change while you wait for the hearing. You can still try to resolve it. You could still possibly um, get your benefits back to the date they were terminated, but you're gonna lose the benefit until you resolve the situation. Um, so those are the options, how it works asking for a hearing. When you get a notice in the mail saying your benefit will end or change, on the back side of that notice, are also instructions on how to ask for the hearing with the phone number, there's an address um, and the website I think there is there too on how to ask for a hearing. So what happens when you ask for a hearing? So a lot of people, I know my clients are nervous, they don't wanna go to hearing, they don't, it, it's uncomfortable, it's not something they're used to doing. But when you ask for a hearing, what that does is it takes your case from the local Medi-Cal office and it assigns another person to take a look at your case. That person is called the appeals specialist. The appeals specialist represents Medi-Cal and they will contact you and try to resolve your problem. So let's say um, your Medi-Cal terminated because you didn't send back your redetermination packet. You never got it in the mail. You will contact your appeals specialist and say, you know, my Medi-Cal ended but I never got my packet in the mail, so I, I didn't know how to do that. So they would work with you and say, oh, okay, I see you didn't get your packet or we had the wrong address. What we can try to do is solve the problem. So they may offer you what's called a conditional withdrawal. It means you agree to withdraw from the hearing on the condition that Medi-Cal does something. 
they're going to try to solve the problem for you. So they can um, send you the redetermination packet. You can complete it. They can um, review it. And then you can try to resolve it that way. So even if you ask for a medical hearing, it doesn't mean you're going to have to go to the hearing. Most of the time, you can resolve the problem by talking to the appeals specialist and trying to get it resolved. You always have the right to go to hearing if you want to and have a judge um, listen to your case. These hearings are very informal. You can do them over the phone. You can do them on a Zoom call like this, or you could do it in person at the office. Um, so those are your options. But a medical hearing, asking for a hearing is a good way to try to resolve your case. It doesn't mean you're going to go to a hearing. It just means someone else is going to pull your file, look at your case, and see if you can resolve it. I wanted to let you know about a, a safety net for people who are on, on, on IHSS, and I think this is a great. So Medica has a safety net for IHSS recipients. So if you are on IHSS and your Medi-Cal stops, your IHSS, which is linked to Medi-Cal eligibility, even though your Medi-Cal stops, your IHSS will continue for a few months. You will be changed from regular, um, from your regular IHSS program. There are different IHSS programs, uh, which are funding sources. So if your Medi-Cal stops, you won't be on Medi-Cal linked IHSS anymore. You will change to what's called the Medi-Cal, the, sorry, the IHSS residual program. So if your Medi-Cal stops, you will be changed to the IHSS residual program. So your benefits will continue for a couple months. So you'll have some time to try to get your Medi-Cal reinstated. If you don't get your Medi-Cal reinstated within a few months, and I'm not quite sure of the exact time frame, um, your IHSS will eventually stop if you don't reinstate your Medi-Cal. But if your Medi-Cal is terminated and you're on IHSS, you will have a couple months of benefits that will continue um, until you can try to get your Medi-Cal resolved. Now, if you're on IHSS and you go from free Medi-Cal to Medi-Cal with a share of cost, the share of cost will be applied to your IHSS case and you would owe that to your consumer. So this sorry, to your provider. This process um, only works for Medi-Cal terminating or stopping, then your IHSS continues. So that is a bit of a safety net for IHSS consumers. Usually you'll get a notice of action in the mail from IHSS saying you have been changed to the residual program. If you get a notice saying your IHSS has been changed to the residual program, um, think, oh my gosh, my Medi-Cal has stopped. I better resolve this problem quickly. So just be aware of that fact because it will not continue for that long in the IHSS residual program. It should be a warning sign for you. Here's another option uh, to get your Medi-Cal benefits reinstated. Sometimes Medi-Cal stops because you didn't give them information they requested, like you didn't give them documentation of your income. Um, there are different ways you can give Medi-Cal information. You can mail it to them. You can call the phone number. This is the phone number for Customer Service Center in Los Angeles, which is 866-613. 3777. You can call the customer service center and give them the information over the phone verbally. You can go to Benefits Cal, set up an account and provide the information there. Or you can go to the uh, Department of Public Social Services office in person and give them the forms in person. If you give it to them in person, make sure you get a receipt. They're supposed to give you receipts for forms. So if they say, oh, you never gave it to us, You'll have a receipt. You can show them the receipt. Hey, I did. I dropped this off on October 5th. Here's the receipt. I dropped off this document. Um, if your Medi-Cal benefits stop, you have 90 days to contact the Medi-Cal office and give them the information they need in order to restart your benefits. 
Now, if um, you, for some reason, you can't turn the paperwork in on time, it would be too hard for you to get the paperwork. You can contact Medi-Cal either by phone or going in the office, and you can give them what's called a sworn statement. So you can tell them like, I can't get my social security confirmation document, but I'm telling you under a sworn statement that my social security income is $1,400 a month. They are supposed to accept that information as true and not require you to get the actual document if you're not able to get it. So that's a new rule. Uh, so if you need to do that, make sure that your eligibility worker will accept it. If the eligibility worker says, no, you can't just tell me you need to get the document, you can ask to speak with a supervisor. The workers may not be familiar with this new rule. Uh, understand Medi-Cal has hired lots and lots of new eligibility workers uh, over the past year or so. And many of these workers have never done a redetermination. So they are on a learning curve as well. So if they are telling you information that you think is incorrect, you have the right to request a supervisor and ask to speak with a supervisor who may be more familiar with the rules. Like I said, you have 90 days to provide Medi-Cal with the information they need to restart your benefits. If it's after 90 days, you either have to reapply for benefits or you could request a hearing uh, within the 120 day time frame. So you have a little longer to request a hearing than just contacting Medi-Cal office directly. You have an extra 30 days to ask for a hearing. And this is a big change I want to point out. I should have had a whole slide for this because it's very exciting. If you are a current Medi-Cal beneficiary, there is no longer an asset limit for you, okay? Medi-Cal used to have an asset limit for many, many years of $2,000 for a single person. And then last year, it was raised to $130,000 for a single person. And now, if you're a current beneficiary, there is no asset limit for you. So Medi-Cal should not be asking you about your assets at all. If you're a current beneficiary, you don't have to give them information showing what your assets are in your bank accounts, stocks, bonds, that kind of thing. Um, the form, the redetermination form still asks for that information because they didn't have time to update the form. But I think there's an insert saying you don't have to provide it. So you don't have to provide asset information. You can have $300,000 in assets and still continue to qualify for Medi-Cal if you're a current beneficiary. Um, in January of 2024, so in a few short months, there will be no asset limit for anybody on Medi-Cal. So current beneficiaries, you have uh, they're implementing this rule ahead of time for you. If you're a current beneficiary for new Medi-Cal applicants in January of 2024, there will be no asset limit. Okay, there'll still be income guidelines for different programs, um, but there will be no asset limit. Medi-Cal will not be looking at your assets when they're seeing whether or not you're eligible for benefits. So that's a huge change in the program. And it will allow many new people to access Medi-Cal starting in January of 2024. Now, I want to mention um, share of cost. If if you have never had a share of cost, and now all of a sudden you get this notice of action in the mail from Medi-Cal saying, hey, you now have a share of cost of $1,500 a month. That's a big change in your benefit. What a share of cost is, is a monthly deductible. So if my share of cost is $1,500 for the month, that, must, that means I must pay the first $1,500 of Medi-Cal services each month. And then if there's any remaining Medi-Cal covered services, Medi-Cal will pay for the rest of those services. So if I have IHSS and I have an IHSS provider and they're working, I would get a letter from IHSS saying, hey, you have a share of cost, you owe your provider $1,500 for the month of November. And then in-home supportive services would pay the provider directly for the remaining amount. 
So most people who have a share of cost cannot afford it because it's really, really expensive. So if my income is $2,100 a month, my share of costs would be $1,500 a month. I would only get to keep $600 a month to live on. So of course I can't afford it. So if your Medi-Cal changes from free Medi-Cal to share of cost Medi-Cal, there are ways to get rid of the share of cost. When you call Medi-Cal, they're supposed to tell you about options to remove the share of cost. But like I just mentioned, there are a lot of new eligibility workers and they may not be familiar with these options. Um, so I wanted to give you some basic information about these options. So when you call your eligibility worker, you know the keywords, the secret words to say to get them to process you for the correct program. Okay, so if you get social security disability benefits or you used to get social security disability benefits before you turned 65, there's a special program for you to help you get rid of the share of cost. It's called the Working Disabled Program. It's for people that receive social security disability or used to get social security disability. This special program has no share of cost. So if I had a $1,500 share of cost and I received social security disability, I could ask for the working disabled program. In the working disabled program, all I have to do is earn $1 a month of income doing anything. Like I could take recycling cans into recycling and get paid a dollar. Now I have a dollar of income, I'm working, and I can get rid of my $1,500 share of cost by just earning a dollar a month working, okay? You can do anything to earn income. I have people that watch their neighbor's dog for an hour a month or babysit or water a friend's plants and the friend pays them. Whatever you can come up with working, you could get into the working disabled program with any work. Now, again, you have to receive social security disability or have received social security disability in order to use this special program. So that's one option. Another option to remove the share of cost is if you're married and either you or your spouse or registered domestic partner need a lot of home care. There's special rules for married couples where one person needs a lot of home care. These rules are kind of complicated. I'm not going to get into them today, but they allow a much higher uh, level of income and the income is much more flexible in order to get rid of the share of cost. These special rules are called the spousal impoverishment rules. And they're only for married couples when one person in the couple needs a lot of home care. Like if one person needs help bathing or dressing or walking, they may qualify for these special spousal impoverishment rules. So you could call Medi-Cal and say, I have this share of costs. Can I get rid of it? I'm married and I need a lot of home care and see if that could help you get rid of the share of costs. And there's a final option to get rid of a share of cost. Um, to get free Medi-Cal, your countable income right now has to be under $1,677, okay? And you could buy supplemental health insurance, so extra health insurance, dental insurance, vision insurance, or other health insurance to lower your income to under $1,677 for a single person. And then you could get free Medi-Cal. You can contact Medi-Cal and ask them, you know, how much health insurance do I need to buy in order to get free Medi-Cal? And they are supposed to figure that out and tell you how much health insurance to buy to get free Medi-Cal. So if you have a share of cost, be aware that there are different ways to get rid of the share of cost and Medi-Cal should tell you whether or not you qualify for any of these ways, okay? So let me talk about a different way to get help. 
So I'm not sure if you know who your board of supervisors are. They are the five most powerful women in Los Angeles County, and they run the county. Um, they also supervise the Medi-Cal and IHSS offices. So they are elected officials. You vote for your board of supervisor for your district, depending on where you're living. Uh, so there's a picture of the five Board of Supervisor members here on this slide. It's um, Hilda Solis, Holly Mitchell, Lindsay Horvath, Janice Hahn, and Catherine Barger. They are the supervisors for LA County. And each of your supervisor's offices has a special person to help resolve problems with Medi-Cal and IHSS. Now, I have found them very helpful uh, in resolving small problems. So if you're trying to get through to the customer service center or you talk to an eligibility worker at Medi-Cal and they say, okay, we'll call you back and no one ever calls you back and you call again and no one calls you back, you can call the board of supervisors. They will help resolve your problem. Or you can't even get through to the customer service center because you have to wait an hour and a half online on the, sorry, on the phone and you can't get through. And you try a couple of times, you can't get through. You could call the board of supervisors for help. Um, if you've tried to resolve your problem with the local Medi-Cal office or IHSS and you just can't get help for some reason or you think they're not doing processing your case correctly, you can call the board. What's really nice about calling your board member is someone actually picks up the phone and they have a special person assigned to help resolve problems. I found them to be pretty effective. You can call this number 213-974-1411. Uh, this is the number for the General Board of Supervisors office. And if you give them your address, they'll tell you what your board member's phone number is directly. Because it's kind of hard to figure out. It's based on your address. So call the Board of Supervisors General Information at 213-974-1411. And they will give you the direct number for your board member. So that's a, another option to help you resolve problems with Medi-Cal, IHSS, or CalFresh. Anything benefit administered through the Department of Public Social Services, they can help with. Also, you can get free legal help. The best people to contact are the Health Consumer Center. They are a nonprofit legal aid agency that help people with all problems with Medi-Cal. They do all kinds of Medi-Cal issues um, and they're free. Their phone number is 800-896-3202, 800-896-3202, that's for LA County. And they are a member of the statewide uh, Health Consumer Alliance who serves the whole state. So if you're not watching from LA County, you're outside LA County, you can call the Health Consumer Alliance. Uh, their phone number is 888-804-3536. That's 888-804-3536. And they can put you in touch with the legal aid that serves your county. So the Health Consumer Alliance and the Health Consumer Center can help with all kinds of issues regarding Medi-Cal. They can help you and advise you about how to remove the share of cost. If you have a denial of medical or Medi-Cal services, they can help you with the denial. They can help you regarding denials of medical equipment. If you have problems paying medical bills, they can talk to you about options to pay your bills. They help with IHSS issues, and they can also advise you about Medicare premium assistance and coverage. So they're a wonderful resource and they're statewide. So this is, I love this picture actually. It's a picture of our universe. It's from the um, 
oh my god i just it's from the space the hubble space telescope it's an actual picture from the hubble space telescope so if you're feeling spaced out and overwhelmed by all this information here's a summary of different options we talked about about how to keep your medical and you don't have to pick one you could Pick one, two, three of these options, you know, use as many of the options as you need to. There's no right option. You can call the Board of Supervisors to help you resolve your problem. You can call the Medi-Cal office or go to the Medi-Cal office. You can request a hearing. You can call the Health Consumer Alliance for legal help. You can sign up for Benefits Cal to have a direct access to your Medi-Cal case and provide documents directly to Medi-Cal. So these are all tools that you can use to ensure that you keep your Medi-Cal and tools to help you in case your Medi-Cal is denied, stopped, or changed. So that's the end of my formal presentation. I'm happy to stick around for questions. Uh, again, my name is Kim Selfon. I'm a Medi-Cal policy specialist at Betsedic Legal Services. And our phone number is 323-939-0506. That's generally. Um, I'm not taking any Medi-Cal cases right now. Uh, so call the Health Consumer Center if you need assistance with Medi-Cal terminations. They're actually tracking Medi-Cal terminations um, and really wanna hear from you if your Medi-Cal has been terminated or there's a problem. Um, but I'm here to stick around and answer questions if you have any. <laughs>